What's up, Peter? Thanks for joining me. I'm just really excited to share what you're doing. So let's just get right into it. Why are you so passionate about longevity? Because I love life. I think that's the primary reason. Putting aside all the negativism, we're still creating this extraordinary world. And the only time more exciting than today, I like to say, is tomorrow. I'm 61 years old now. I feel like I'm 28, and I really want to go as long as I'm able to contribute to society, and I'm able to like be happy. As every year you live, their technology actually will extend your life. What, what do you think is your conservative estimate? Yeah. And your liberal estimate of like how long you think you can go for the, the oldest known human recorded with decent records is like 123 years old. The bowhead whale can go for 200 years consistently, and the Greenland shark can go for four or 500 years. And so my question is, if they can live that long, why can't we? Right. And my answer is either a hardware problem or a software problem, and we're gonna be able to like fix those this decade. It turns out your genome doesn't change at all. So the question is, if your genes don't change, why do you look different? Why don't you look like you were when you're 18? The reason is it's not your genes, it's what's called your epigenome. And so as we go older, it starts to fall apart and that leads to a whole slew of problems. So can we control the epigenome to slow, stop, or even reverse aging? Today, for every year that you're alive, science is extending your life expectancy by about a quarter of a year which means that for every decade you're alive, you add two and a half years to the end of your life. Now, there will eventually be a time where every year that you're alive, science is extending your life for more than a year. Mm. And that is called longevity escape velocity. So if you ask George Church, who's professor of genomics at Harvard Medical School, when do you think we're gonna reach longevity escape velocity? I expected him to like, you know, be out in 30 or 40 years. He was like, right. within 15 years. So wow. let's be conservative and say 20 years. You, everyone's goal listening here isn't to live forever. It's to live healthfully for the next 20 years to yes. intercept yeah. all the breakthroughs that you're right. going to have. What's your like longevity practices? First is mindset, diet, exercise, sleep, and then I would say not dying from something stupid. And let me, let me talk about each of those. <laughs> so, uh, mindset. I think you can will yourself to life and you can will yourself to death. If you want a longevity mindset, you need to have a future that's bigger than your past. And if you believe that science is doing amazing things to increase the scope of your life, then you're excited about it. And you're gonna take better care of yourself. One of the things that I did is I built an AI engine that scrapes the world's muse, and it's called longevityinsider.org. It's a free program. People go and just plug in your, your email, and every day you'll get the most positive news about breakthroughs in health. So that's part of the mindset part. Okay, next up, diet. Our bodies evolved over 100,000 plus years. And during 99.9% .9 of that, there wasn't any sugar out there or refined carbs. So our body never evolved for that. It was only when all the food companies started you know, addicting us to sugar. And sugar, it sticks to your coronary arteries, it causes various brain diseases, and it's just not good. So diet is important. Exercise is key. Your muscle mass keeps you from falling, breaking a hip, and ending up in the hospital. And there's a correlation. The more muscle you have, the longer you will live. Sleep. Uh, <laughs> I'm talking to the sleep king here, Steve Aoki. Uh, you can't go from like super high gear, watching TV, working on your computer, and then boom, just go to sleep. You need a wind down period. And then I set the temperature of the room down to 64 degrees. It's about not dying of something stupid. And what I mean by that are two categories. Number one, wear your seatbelt. If you're going skiing, wear a helmet. All those things are just yeah. fundamental, right? 
But the other part is none of us really know what's going on inside our bodies. We just don't. Yeah. We're all optimists. If you have, a, God forbid, a stage zero, stage one, stage two cancer, you don't know it until it gets to like stage three or four. And then holy shit, when you go to the hospital with some pain, it's like, I hate to tell you this, but you've got this going on. Yeah. Mm. So one of the things that I did, two separate companies, a company called Human Longevity Inc. And then again, with a separate company called Fountain Life, we digitize you full body upload, right? Full body MRI, 150 gigabytes of data. And our goal, is there anything going on inside your body you need to know about right now? And then we we'll yes. zap it. Yeah, right. just stop it before it gets too yeah. late. Eventually, we're going to have a whole bunch of sensors on the body, in the body, feeding your AI that's measuring you 24 hours, seven days a week. It's not yeah. there yet, but it will happen in the next decade. My goal for those days is to help people shape their mindsets. What has made the most successful people in the world successful? Was it their money? Was it their relationships? Was it technology or was it their mindset? And I would posit that it's their mindset that made them successful. How they deal with problems is your mindset. How you deal with opportunity is your mindset. This is an amazing time where I want people to realize you can make a difference. Yes, I right? love that. And so that's my, my job is to help give people the good news vision of you can change the world. You truly can.